Hello, my name is Ginger Fenton and I'm part of the Penn State Extension Dairy Team. I'd like to share some information with you about a common practice used to monitor milk quality on dairy farms, bulk tank milk sampling. A sample of milk from a bulk tank is a valuable tool that can provide a snapshot of information about the farm at the time when the sample was collected. For this reason, many producers and dairies utilize bulk tank sampling on a regular basis. However, there are limitations to the amount of information that is provided by a single bulk tank milk sample. Bulk tank milk is frequently abbreviated as BTM, and it is likely to appear this way on the reports that a producer receives from the dairy after they have submitted a sample. The report that is received can provide useful information on herd health, sanitation, and the effectiveness of the milking preparation routine. The sample report will provide information on the herd somatic cell count, which is listed as SCC, information on bacteria counts, including standard plate count, or SPC, preliminary incubation count, also known as PIC, or PI, and laboratory pasteurization count, which is LPC, are usually listed on this report. These bacteria counts can provide clues about hygiene, cleaning procedures, and utter preparation routine effectiveness. Additionally, information on milk components, including milk fat, protein, and other solids can be of use when considering feed management and nutrition decisions for the herd. Some reports also would indicate the presence and counts of specific pathogens such as Staphylococcus species, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus species, and coliform bacteria. The report can indicate the bacteria group with the highest number in the tank. These counts also can aid in determining whether contagious or environmental pathogens are present in the milk. A notable limitation of bulk tank milk sampling is that the results from the sample must be applied to the entire herd or to all of the cows whose milk is commingled in the bulk tank. For this reason, it is not possible to assess the health status of an individual cow based on a bulk tank sample. In order to determine the cause of mastitis in an individual cow, a sample should be taken from that cow only. The sample can be from one quarter or from a combination of multiple quarters from that cow. The individual sample is then processed and cultured separately. Some producers have elected to do culturing for themselves on their farms. Attempting to culture a sample of bulk tank milk by these methods would not provide useful information and should not be attempted. Keep in mind that a single bulk tank milk sample can only provide a snapshot of the milk quality at the time when the sample was collected. However, some dairies may collect a sample with each shipment of milk. More frequent sample collection provides more information to use in monitoring the herd. When samples are consistently collected, the results can reflect management practices, both positively or negatively. Results from a change in practice may produce noticeable changes in one or more of the milk quality parameters that are reported. Also keep in mind that depending on the frequency and purpose for sampling, the tubes containing samples can be frozen immediately after being collected and then multiple samples can be shipped to the lab together for convenience and reduced shipping costs. Now let's discuss the process of collecting a milk sample. The best time to collect a sample is one to two hours after milking. The recommendation is to take the sample when the milk in the tank represents only one milking. Prior to collecting the sample, the tank should be agitated for at least 10 minutes. The agitator can be turned on at the control panel. In this picture, the agitator is turned on by rotating the dial to the proper setting. By agitating the tank before sampling, the milk is thoroughly mixed, which allows a representative sample to be collected. 
The sample should always be taken from the top of the tank. Never collect a sample through the outlet at the bottom of the tank due to the risk of contamination of the sample. After adequate agitation of the tank, carefully open the lid. Do not drop or disturb any of the gaskets or covers from the tank lid. Use a clean, sanitized dipper to get a sample. It is important to use a utensil or dipper that is clean and sanitized to avoid contaminating the milk. Plastic tubes with tight-fitting caps are ideal for sampling. Glass bottles or any containers that may be contaminated or may not seal tightly should be avoided. When pouring the sample into the tube, be careful not to touch the inside of the tube or the inside of the cap with your fingers as this could cause contamination. Adequate labeling of the sample is critical. Use a permanent marker or a writing utensil that will not smear to note the date and the sample or tank number. Depending on who is collecting the sample and where it will be sent, additional paperwork may be required. Another key piece of information to record is the temperature of the milk at the time of sampling. To guard against leakage, the tube may be placed in a sealable bag for shipping. Immediately after the preparation of the sample, it should be placed in a cooler on ice for shipping. I recommend checking with the laboratory prior to shipping the sample to make sure that these samples will be accepted when you plan to ship them. Then, wait to receive your sample results.